Robert, let's talk about why. Why did Beijing want the Trudeau government to be re-elected with a minority? Well, they believe that the Liberal government uh, is far more uh, sympathetic uh, and would go easier on them than the Conservatives. The Conservatives under Aaron O'Toole have been uh, far more critical of Beijing's uh, growing belligerency around the world and their attitude in ca Canada. They would have, for example, would have adopted a um, foreign agent registry, which would have meant that former politicians or lawyers uh, or lobbyists who are paid uh, by Be Beijing, of which we do not know that they are, and are doing lobbying on their behalf, including appearing on your show, and you would not know that they're being paid, but they're, you know, pro-Beijing kind of attitudes, uh, we would know that. The other thing is, of course, uh, at the, at, during that particular time, the Conservatives were also said they would ban Huawei. And the Canadian government at that particular in that 2020 election, 21 election, had not banned Huawei, even though our other allies had. So there were a lot of reasons why the uh, uh, Chinese government would have preferred to have the Liberals in power rather than the uh, Conservatives. And you know, right from the get-go, frankly, from 2015 when Mr. Trudeau came in, he was all he was talking about a trade deal with China. They were talking about, believe it or not, an extradition treaty with China, which. Uh, which would be unbelievable if we were to do that. Uh, anybody who was a dissident of uh, China could say they committed some criminal act and want them extradited, extradited to China. So there were a lot of reasons why China uh, would have preferred to have the Liberals, although uh, the intelligence does show that uh, Chinese China uh, was beginning to was beginning to get unhappy with the with the uh, Trudeau Liberals because they'd they'd become um, much less uh, friendlier towards them. Not surprisingly, because that particular time, the two Michaels were in, in, in a Chinese prisons. We were aware of the 2019 alleged influence in the Canadian election, but this, what you've uncovered and reported on is about the 2021 mm -hmm. elections. How exactly are Chinese agents, Chinese officials trying to exert any sort of influence in the electoral process? Well, they do it a number of ways, according to the CSIS documents. Obviously, one way uh, is disinformation campaigns uh, using um, uh, WeChat and other uh, and, and, uh, Chinese uh, language media uh, to, uh, you know, go after the conservatives. There are other ways where they uh, will uh, favor ca candidates uh, that are liberals, um, you know, so there would be un uh, apparently undeclared cash donations. There would be uh, businesses would hire uh, uh, Chinese students uh, from, from China who are here as international students studying them. They would be paid uh, under the table to uh, work on the uh, campaigns of preferred liberals. And there was also, according to CSIS, uh, a scheme where a businessman or, so or somebody would be, uh, be making a donation to a, a, a liberal candidate they would uh, get a, once they got their tax return back, the Chinese government would make up the difference uh, from, uh, from, from the, the money that was donated. Uh, once they got their, their campaign donation back, they would make up the difference with that kind of money. So uh, it's pretty widespread. And, you know, it, they, were, they were concentrating on writings where there is a, a large, um, largely mainland Chinese Canadian community who, and the documents have um, uh, point out that Chinese diplomats say they're easy to influence. And partly the, for that is, um, you know, the, the, these are vulnerable communities. They have families back in, in China uh, and they're susceptible to that kind of uh, pressure. And also, um, you know, the disinformation campaigns were very effective. As you, you had a clip at the beginning uh, where people were saying that you know, if if the Tories get in, they will, you know, your children will not be able to study in Canada. And that's the kind of stuff that's pretty frightening in these communities. So, yeah. it's pretty. It was a pretty effective campaign. Um, you know, both in 2019 and in 2021, we know that in 2019 there were at least 11 candidates that they had targeted. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the number is in 2021. I didn't. The documents I saw did not have any figures like that. You know, the Prime Minister was asked about this again yesterday, and he said, mm -hmm. 
Sure, there was meddling, but it didn't, in the end, impact the results of the election. Is the prime minister well, right? Well, look, look, say that to uh, Alice Wong, Bob Soraya, and uh, Kenny Chu, who uh, at least uh, uh, were can the candidates we know were defeated because of uh, now know were defeated because of Chinese government uh, uh, tactics. Which um, you know, there's a parliamentary committee that is that is studying this, and CSIS has uh, appeared before. Government officials have appeared before. And nobody has said, yes, they have interfered and they caused the, the result of, of these MPs to lose their elections. And we know from the documents that China is bragging about the fact that they defeated these candidates. So the government has not been telling Canadians the truth. Uh, you know, the best way to deal with these kind of inf interference and influence activity is to shine a light in on it so that Canadians are aware of what is going on and can prepare to deal with it. Robert Fife, sir, thank you so much for your time. Excellent work as always. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.